Silana, 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 you know what's gonna happen. Silana, Silana, Silana. We are, we are. <laughs> mm. We are within. Don't go all the way up. Do not even think about it. Okay. We're all the way within. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another Candid with Cat, with a K. Um, as you can see from the title down below, we're gonna get into something really hectic. We're gonna get into something that a lot of people do not talk about. We're gonna get into female to female friendships. But we're going to dive into it. We're going to talk about the problems that come with female to female friendships. The, just the drama the drama of it all and we're going to talk about friendships things you've been through listen go fella all these things but you know those friends are just hum nan or we're going to talk about that kind of stuff because i feel like it's not discussed often i feel like we know of a friend who behaves this way or we know of somebody who's told us that hey muto so 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 or we know we have these friends and yet we're just too childish to talk about it. Why? Why are we not talking about it? Why do women have such big problems with women? And even as friendships, friendships as my friend, now, before I get into anything, I need us to talk about friendships, just generally, okay? I think all of us are of the understanding that we know what friendships are. We know what a friendship, a good friendship is supposed to feel like. A good friendship is supposed to be reciprocated. You're supposed to feel good when you're with this person. When you're with them, you have a good time. You learn from one another, you grow from one another. And you know, all the people that come into your life in terms of friends, female friends, some might tick those boxes off, some just don't. And a lot of the time we try and avoid it. We try and shrug it under the rug like, nah, ah, she was probably acting a fool because she's going through some things and blah, blah, blah and all of that. Nah, nah, nah. First and foremost, you should know your friend as much as your friend should know you. And your friends should have, you know, boundaries. Friendships should have there must be a, a, a consensus and understanding of how we are going to run this friendship that no. some friends come for a reason some friends come for a season and some friends are for life and i believe that highly highly believe that and i feel like sometimes we just need to accept it for what it is and not take any offense to it we don't have to feel some type of way you don't need to keep somebody around if they're not good for you if they're not good for your mental space if they disrespect you if they are constantly competing with you if they don't respect the boundaries that you have that you set out for everyone not just them i feel like it's hard for us why is it hard for us women to abide by those rules when it comes to our friends and we let our friends get away with stuff why do we do that essentially what i did was I put on my YouTube community tab that I'm going to be doing a video on friendships. Please comment down below and tell me what you'd like me to discuss or share your story and I will definitely share it in the video. This is going to be a long video. I'm, I'm telling you that right now because yo, did you guys come through on YouTube and on Instagram. You guys wanted me to tackle some points that I already had in my mind but somehow I was just like yo, 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 can't your friend did this. What do you even mean? So my memory card died and I had to do the things for the things for the parts. You know, you know what I mean. Um, but what I was saying is that I wanted to have a clear understanding of what a good friendship is supposed to feel like. Before we get into the things you guys said and how I ended up segmenting everything so that we all have a clear understanding of what we're going to be talking about today. Okay, let me have a drink because I had memory card issues and I was just, I was, I was kind of over it at this point. Mm-hmm. So, we all know that the good friends are the good friends and we all know that there's toxic friends. There's, there's the, the people who will drain you, the people who, who just, who, who are resentful and they're never really happy for you. Based on your responses off of Instagram and YouTube about this topic and what you guys wanted me to talk about, 
I segmented essentially what you guys were saying into three categories. Conflict, competition, and boundaries. And I feel like all of these, at some point, Eman, one of your friends, has sort of like dipped into this category and you're like, Mar Marwai? Why will so? So with competition, there's, let's be honest, there's certain friends or you may have come across certain types of friends, I apologize, that you may have come across certain types of friends that secretly compete with you. And you can see by their attitude, their actions, their meaners, their, their behaviors, uh, that this person, why, why do they feel some type of way when I tell them about a certain thing that has happened in my life? Think about it. They're friends who compete with you academically, there are friends who compete with you in terms of your career. There are friends who compete with you in terms of your lifestyle. There's friends who compete with you in terms of um, just just generally. They just, just they just feel like they want to one up you with everything. And it's like, but a baby girl, ochomiaga, you my friend. I don't understand how why you feel with men, with men, and in terms of their achievement on, on, on the line of their journey. They want to compete with you. They want to be the first one who's going to get married. They want to be the first one who's going to have a child. They want to be the first one who's going to achieve or be better or do better than you. Why? My question is, what is the problem? What about my life has got you so uh, that you feel like you need to be better? I need to do better than Gatleo. Why? Why? You know those friends, you must have come across those friends that constantly ask you about one thing in terms of what achievement you, you have or how far did you go in school or, oh, your boyfriend, tell me about him. So does he have kids? Is he married? Um, oh, well, you know, my man, actually, let me tell you, God, you know, my man, um, he's a CA, he's very, very well accomplished. What did you say your man was? Oh, he's a, he's a what? Oh, 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 what do they do? Why must you be that person? If you are my friend, why are you that person? I don't understand. There are friends who compete with you in just in terms of lifestyle. There's, guys, <laughs> I had a friend. Had is the operative word. I had a friend who would constantly contact me only when she's bought a new car only when she's moved into a new house and she would go as far as uh sending me pictures of the development of her house and she would go as far as oh no but she would never contact me just generally like hey how are you doing all of that like we grew up together and it's sad because for me i always want to see i'm an idealist i'm very optimistic i want to see the good in people i want to not think that as my friend, you would be trying to one-up me or you would be secretly trying to destroy my life or you would be to... I just... This girl <laughs> and my friends from childhood would know who are currently watching this. This girl would call me only when she would, was going to tell me about her achievements or only when... And it was sad because I liked her so much. I still feel like there's a huge part of me that really likes her because... Aside from all the crap, she really was a good person. But why are you calling me to tell me who you've achieved A, B, C, Z, A, you've bought a new house, eh? oh, your man took, took you on a trip to wherever, wherever, and this and this. I don't care where your man took you. I care about you. I care about you. Tell me more about you, your life, and this and this. Don't, don't tell me about what you have done in comparison to what I have done? Why is that even a thing? So there are those who will compete with your lifestyle. There are those who are going to only, you know, want to share information about themselves when they've achieved more than you have, or at least they think they've achieved more than you have. So, but they're always constantly watching your life. They're watching your life on social media. They're watching your life just generally, they're constantly asking other mutual friends or other people who know you about you, like, hey, where's Katleo? How's she doing? What is your concern? What is your concern about being so hell-bent, trying to um, figure out what it is I'm doing so that you can one-up me? Why? So, get, get the boats, get the boats. How, how, 
how healthy is that for your friendship for the relationship that you're trying to build with that person how healthy i i just don't get what the essence of it is and that already shows you that you shouldn't even be around a person like that who's constantly watching you just so that they can one-up you okay it's just that ain't it the next thing is conflict the first thing that i want to say with this i want to make it clear why is it that women are willing to fight hard tooth and nail for a relationship with a man and we're not even going to talk about how maybe that man has been ill-treating you and whatever. Or, you know, that man that said mean things about your family, about your mama, about your papa, about your whatever. But you are willing to fight tooth and nail to save that relationship. But you're not going to fight tooth and nail to save your friendship. Isn't your friendship a type of relationship? Yes, it's not a lover-on-lover -lover relationship, but it's a type of relationship. So... Why are you not willing to actually you know, find ways to solve the, 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 the confrontations, the, the fights that you have with your friends? Why are you so willing to easily let it go? Think about it. Think about it. Coconut kills. Think about it. With conflict, I feel like a lot of the time pride gets in the way. Pride gets in the way of a relationship, of a friendship. Pride gets in the way of a friendship thriving. Because one, we don't care to want to sit down and actually fix what the issue is. So I'm willing to just tell your ass off and then not attend to it anymore and not give a damn about it. I find this very, very strange because... There are friends who are very territorial, right? There's just situations where they're very, they, 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 they're territorial. They don't quite understand why you have other friends. You know how they're those kinds of friends that no, but Katleo is my friend. And they get some type of way that they're willing to cause a conflict when they see that on Instagram on a Saturday afternoon, you were sitting with one of your other good friends at Jamelli or Pantry or whatever, and you were having a drink and you were having a good time and blah, blah, blah. And then they're suddenly upset with you. No, yeah, yeah, I can see. I can get one already. You, you, you're friendly, friendly. You've got new friends now. Baby girl. Am I not supposed to have other friends? Am I not supposed to have other friendships? Is it just about me and you? What is the problem? I don't understand these territorial types of friends and that are so prideful eventually at some point when they realize that, nah, you know what, it's fine. Go sit with your friends, with your bougie friends. You forget where me and you came from. Me and you came from childhood. I know everything about you. Yes. That's, that's not the problem. But why must you feel some type of way about your, your friend hanging out with other friends? Why must you make them feel bad about it? Thus in turn causing conflict. Okay, forget the fact that maybe you've got a territorial friend. Or you've got... Let's talk about how pride is the one thing that makes friendships fail. And they fail over the dumbest things. I feel like if you are... If you have a good, long-lasting friendship with one of your good mates, I feel like even when you go into conflict, even when you reach that stage, I really genuinely feel like if you can't sit down and talk to your mate without your mate feeling some kind of offended or without your mate blowing a gasket on you or without your mate doing whatever, if you can sit down with them and have a decent conversation, many of friendship breakups could be avoided. Many of them. Why can't if we have a conflict as friends, if I didn't like what you said last night or where or I didn't like how you were so too cutesy, cozy, cozy around my man, or I didn't like how you made it seem as if uh, you are more academically, whatever, whatever, and you are sort of bragging to me and whatever. Why is it wrong for me to say that without you going crazy? Because these are the things that actually break up friendships. Money is another thing that breaks up a good friendship. And because we can't deal with conflict, we can't, we can't address conflict the mature way, then it's, then it's a problem. Then friendships, they, they, they fail. They break up because of things like that. Why can't we talk about it?
think about it. This one. The next thing is boundaries with friends. You need to know what is acceptable, what is not, what will be tolerated, what will not. Your friend needs to know where they can and can't overstep the mark with you. But the difference with this is that there are different types of friends, okay? There are the friends that you have when, you know, the, the really good friends that know everything about you. They know about your family life, your private life. They know everything about you. Those are your, your ride or dies, right? Then you have the friends that you meet socially when you're out and about and having a good time and what have you. These aren't the friends that you share intricate details about your life with, right? But when it comes to boundaries, I feel like we need to understand the type of friend that we have. So if you're going to put Katleo here and you're going to put Sintaulele here, okay? Katleo needs to understand what kind of person Sintaulele is and your behavior and what you share and what you don't share is highly dependent on the type of friend that you have here. Because you know, if Sintaulele is a run by, you know Sintaulele is here, she talks too much, she runs her mouth. You're not going to go and tell Sintaulele your business. Why would you go and tell Sintaulele your business? But if you know that Sintaulele is quiet, she's your ride or die, you've told her so many things before and blah, blah, blah and all of that, you know you can tell her and she doesn't overstep the mark and overstep the boundaries with you a lot of the time, right? I feel like when it comes to boundaries, it's boundaries upon, you know, asking really, really intricate and intimate questions. There's certain things you just can't ask your friends. You just can't ask your friends. It doesn't matter if it's your friend. You can't... I know as girls we talk and we get really, really in detail about things and blah, blah, blah. But if you're going to come and ask me how much I earn, like, I don't understand what, what, why would you feel like that is appropriate to come and ask me how much I earn. And also with things like money, there must be boundaries. Because I feel like you can't... It's one thing borrowing your friend some money this month, you know. But if your friend starts to make it a habit, constantly borrowing money from you. Hi, no, please borrow me. Hi, no, please borrow me. Blah, blah, blah. You're, you're overstepping a certain mark at this point. Because essentially... Now you're making me a part of your monthly budget because you know that, oh yeah, I'm gonna ask Katleo, it's fine. Does Katleo not have expenses? Does Katleo not have things? Like there must be levels of boundaries where friends, even friends need to understand that, nah, I can't, nah, nah, okay, no. You're, there, there's certain things that you can and can't do with a significant other as well. That's just like, nah. I feel like with boundaries, you need to take it like this. Take it in such a way that there's an understanding of if I don't want it done to me, I'm not going to do it to them. Right? It's simple. If I don't want it done to me, I'm not going to do it to them. If I don't want my friend asking me about how much I earn, I don't have the right to ask her how much she's earning. Right? If I don't want my friend to be too uh, cozy cozy with my man and all of that, blah, blah. Yeah, you understand? And I just feel like it's sometimes it's even unwritten. You don't need to explain things like this. But then if you have to, you can. And if somebody still chooses to disrespect you in that manner and just continue as if you don't even exist in this point and continue like nothing ever happened, like they didn't offend you, then it should tell you a lot about that kind of friend. Because if you went there and you were like, listen, I, can, can we have a conversation? So and so, I didn't like it. So and so, I didn't like it. Yada, 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 I didn't like it. Right? And if they blow a gasket at you with something that really, honestly, to, to, to generally, the normal mind, it would make sense, you need to think about that friend then you really need to think about that friend. Because I feel like with my friendships, I will not do to my friends something that I don't expect them to do to me. All right, I feel like I've been talking about this for way too long. We're going to get into what you guys said. Because, sissy, what do you even mean?
<laughs> so a lot of people were essentially saying that good friendships are worth it. I asked, are good friendships worth? Are friendships worth it? Female to female friendships worth it? Or are they too dramatic? And most people, of course, said they're worth it, which I agree. If you found the, 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 the greatest friends, they're definitely worth it. They become sisters. They become amazing. Okay. Uh, can we talk about underlying competition from friends? I have a friend that I met. I have a friend, and through her, I met another one. And the other one, she's got more in common with the second friend than she does with the first one. So the original friend gets jealous <laughs> to an extent that she wants to gossip and become childish. I touched on that. I touched on that earlier on where there are those territorial friends, the friends that feel like you need to be just friends with me and they feel some type of way when they realize that you've got other friends. And that's not cool. I feel like you need to sit down and have a conversation with your friend and say, listen, I love you, but I also love my other friends. And you need to understand that it's it's not, when I'm with them, I'm not sitting discussing you or whatever, whatever, and I would respect it if you would stop being childish and being this way about this other person. Just don't do that, okay? We're friends, we can all be friends, of course, mutually to some extent with the other one, but have a conversation. Oh, Sit down. The next one was so dramatic. My friend of 10 years recently broke up with me via text and blocked me. What did you do? Friend of 10 years. I mean, you have to understand that I'm going to ask, what did you do? If at all your friend of 10 years recently broke up with you via text and blocked you. Kore, she was fucking... Kore, yes, I was going to ask you. I was going to <laughs> but maybe you didn't do anything but but the first question i would definitely ask is what did you do what did you do hey cat i i definitely think they're worth it uh but they're so hard to come by this this is from kaizen and uh when they really work they're amazing an amazing sisterhood forms i definitely agree with that is it worth it to hold on to a friendship that leaves you empty lonely pathetic and broken i feel like you've answered this this in that statement, there's a straight answer. If you're already, a friendship is not supposed to make you feel broken. It's not supposed to make you feel pathetic, really. It's not supposed to make you feel empty. A friendship is supposed to fill you. It's supposed to, you're supposed to grow from it. The friendships that I have right now, we talk about business. We talk about traveling together. We talk about, um, maybe sometimes we might talk about our relationships, but we advise each other really well. It's very fulfilling and it's women that I feel like I will grow with for the rest of my life. So if a friendship is leaving you feeling this type of way, pathetic, empty and broken, go, go. Can you also touch on the boundaries when it comes to a significant other? But I feel if one, you're overly too friendly with your friend's man or your you, I feel like you can know them beforehand, right? And you can know like the, your friend's man before she became, she got into a relationship with him. That's cool. That's not a problem. You can know them beforehand, but there's a difference between a friend and somebody who's sleeping with you. There's a completely, there's, again, I genuinely feel like if your friend needs to respect the boundary that your man is your man. Whether they are friends with your man or they're not, they need to respect the boundary because I feel like if you can't respect that boundary and you, you continually, willy-nilly, do whatever, say whatever, go wherever, blah, I don't know, whatever. If you continue to just do that and behind your friend's back, meanwhile, that's her man, I just, I can't be on board with that because I genuinely feel like if you're the one doing that to your mate, with her man or chat or whatever chatting up with her man or whatever if you're doing that with to your mate how would you feel if it's done with you to I you feel like take it back bring it back and bring it back to yourself how would you feel if 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 your friend was getting overly cozy with your man or your friend or your friend was chatting things with your man that you knew nothing about or you know did things with your man and they didn't tell you how would you feel I feel like think about it that way. There needs to be certain boundaries. And if they can't be respected by the one friend, but respected by the other one, then already there's a, 
there's no equilibrium there. It just doesn't make any sense, you know? Uh, you can talk about it and you can move past it. I'm not saying that the, relation, the friendship is going to end. No, you can talk about it. You can move past it. But if you don't talk about it, how do you expect to move past it? The point I'm trying to make. Please, can you also touch on financial aspects of friendship in terms of borrowing money? I don't have a problem with borrowing my friends' money if they need money. I don't have a problem. I have a problem if it happens too often. Now it becomes a consecutive thing. It's constantly happening, happening, happening. Then I have some sort of issue or, okay, wait. Like, you've, you've made me a part of your budget, your monthly budget. I don't understand. And if that is the case, if I'm bothered by it, if it's small increments of amounts, like your friend calls you up and is like, hey, man, borrow me a hundred bucks, I don't have a problem. But if you're going to be asking me for a thousand rand, two thousand rand, every single month, you need to be considerate. You can't just be constantly borrowing money off of your friend and expecting them to be okay with it all the time. Mm -hmm. Too dramatic. I had a friend who I love like a sister and long story short, she's currently dating my ex. Well, what you gonna do? Yeah, no? There's those kinds of... I feel like with my friends and right throughout my life, with my friends, we've always had the understanding out. Listen, we, we don't play there. We don't play there. Even if it's an ex, we don't play there. We just don't do that. Yeah. The importance of reciprocation in a friendship and how actual effort is very important. Yes, absolutely. Effort is important. Do your friends do what you do for them? I mean, I know with my friends, I will travel to wherever my friend lives. My friend can live in Pretoria. I'll go there. My friend can live in... Uh, uh, one of my good friends lives in Danefern. And Danefern is quite a distance from me. But I go there. I don't have a problem. Does she come to me? Absolutely. She visits me all the time. She sleeps here. She doesn't act like this is her house, waking up at whatever time she wants to wake up. Yes, Palace, I'm talking about you. Um, and we do holidays together, whatever. But you need to take note of the relationships or the friendships that where that doesn't happen. Are you visiting them all the time and they never visit you? Uh, are you... You know, constantly, you know, you're paying for things all the time and they never pay. Uh, are you, like, you gotta think about things like that. These things are so important. Make mental note of it. Uh, because reciprocation is very important in a friendship. Um, you can do nice things for your friends. There's nothing wrong. I mean, if you give your friend a gift of something, it's a gift. The question is, do you think it's okay for someone not to have friends? Absolutely. Absolutely. I feel like if you are comfortable enough in your life to not have friends and it doesn't really affect you negatively in any way, absolutely. I mean, you've got family, you've got colleagues, you, you don't have to have uh, friends. It doesn't mean you're not cool, you're, you're not cool, you're, you ain't cool, you can't sit with us just because you don't have friends. No, absolutely. I'm very picky when it comes to friendships and that has seen me lose quite a few friends. I've kind of accepted that the only friends I'll have will be within my immediate family, which sucks sometimes. That's, I get that, but I feel like you can be picky as long as you're not unrealistic. Because friends are people. Your friends are people as well. They've got feelings. You can't control another person. Uh, you can't expect them to do what you want them to do in your time. So I feel like you need to consider things like that. And if you genuinely aren't that kind of person where maybe you, you may have controlling tendencies or blah, 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 then maybe friends are just not for you. And that is fine. You've got your family, like you say, and you've got... Um, uh, family members and what have you that you can be friends with that's that's also okay have you ever had a painful friendship breakup absolutely I've had quite a few one recent one which I didn't want I still refuse to believe that it's a breakup I feel like we, we need to get it together but I feel like genuinely I wasn't in the wrong and I I was well within my right to express my opinion on a certain thing and yeah she went off on me and i didn't expect that i thought that we'd be cool we'd talk about it but she went off on me and i haven't spoken to her really pretty much since if i speak to her again definitely open up open to it if i don't i don't and yeah that's that on that that's the sole point that i don't want to talk about but i have i have had painful friendship breakups 
painful ones which i didn't want to lose those girls but i did this video short now i loved doing this video very very passionate about this one and i feel like we all should be um friendships are really important um happy for those who do have great friendships this includes myself and those who don't it's not the end of the world i feel like um as long as you are confident in yourself and you know who you are and what you want and what you're about it doesn't matter it's your friend having a friend is not gonna fill your life any more than having um a husband or a child it's not a validation well according to me it shouldn't be anything that validates you you should fill your own life your way with what you like and what what makes you happy and what makes you grow and mature as a person that's pretty much it from me i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know what you'd like me to talk about below down below in the next cat did with cat video and i'm gonna uh edit this quickly and i'll see you in the next one bye Woo! hectic